This time I'll get it right, dude. I'll fucking. I had it like we just did that mic check. I was like, that was like the best mic check ever, right? So I should go back and forth. It's like I didn't even have it plugged in. Oh, well, that usually helps. Yeah. It usually helps to have it plugged in, that is. The following program is brought to you by Gizop Productions. Podcast no one listens to with Kevin Porter. Nice. Nice. Does it even feel like we're talking here? Does it even feel like we're together? Inside my mind, inside your mind, what is up? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an all-new episode of the podcast that no one listens to. I am your host, Kevin Porter. Welcome to the Thunderdome, motherfuckers. We're back with an all-new episode this week. Eric Smesthead's on the show. Holy shit. Super excited for that, guys. Dude, how has your week been? That's good. Then Wendy said, what? Holy shit. That's fucking crazy, dude. I'm glad you fucking brought that to the show this week. Holy shit. So, yeah, my week has been eventful, I guess. I guess. Yeah, sure. What have we done? What have I done this week? Nothing major. I got up. Go to work. I get up. I go to work, I get up, I go to work, guess what, guess what, I get up, I go to work, and then it's the weekend, and I get two days off, holy shit, fuck, that's fucking bullshit, (laughs) fuck, dude, I feel, I feel a little burned out right now, at this very moment, as I record this, I feel, I feel pretty burned out, I feel like, I need a break, I need a break from everything, Head's going, it's not fast, not slow, I'm even, I'm feeling good, I feel good, but just, gosh, gotta break up the monotony somehow, man, going to work, five days, every day for two days off, it just doesn't seem like like that's much of a, you know, it's like you put in all this time, and it feels like you should get more than two days a week to like recover and like keep your mind healthy. You know, like it, it's not like I'm sitting here bitching and complaining. I know that this is life and this is how we have to approach it. But every once in a while in said life, you get run down a little bit and you stop and you just have to fucking be like, all right, man, what am I doing? What are we doing? Like, what can we switch up? What can we switch up around here? And then you bitch to yourself. You're like, oh, fuck it, fuck everything. Fuck this, oh, fuck this. You know, like I had one of those bitch sessions today with myself. Just fucking annoyed with everything for no real reason. You're just like, fuck. What am I doing, man? What are we doing in here? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel, it's like when I, when, I, when I sit here and I record this, like I feel good. You know, I'm happy. I am happy with everything. It's just, fuck, five days in a row, dude. And just like, it just you just feel like you need to get out of town. You need to go do something. You need like a week off, like recover. It's like, I, I think to myself, it's like last time I actually had like five days off in a row. You know, it's like, it was, it's almost been a year since then, dude. Like that was last, <clears throat> last July. So it's at least a solid 10 months, you know, what, nine, 10 months ago. That's a long time, dude. I mean, sure, you get some, like, three-day weekends in here, but, dude, three-day weekends, like, three days off isn't enough, dude. Like, you need, like, serious mental health sometimes, like, to really just, like, get your head straight, do the things you want to do, focus on the things you want to fucking focus on, and it's just not do this monotonous fucking job that you could do in your fucking sleep. (laughs) You know what I mean? I mean, maybe that's telling you, telling myself that I need to like, I need to uh, push myself more, and do you know, break up that monotony and do try something new, you know, like whether that be like, you know, seek, you know, seek like, I say like, you know, like, 
you know, like a, a different position within what I'm doing or like, you know, just doing something new, man. It's like, I just feel like I'm fucking like, again, I'm getting up and going to work. I'm getting up. I'm going to work, dude. It's just like, I got to figure out what I need to do to change. It's like, you try to use this podcast as, you know, a vehicle to obtain that change. I think a lot of times we do find that change within this podcast. It's crazy, dude. It's fucking life, dude. And life is fucking insane. It's like really when you just like you stop and you think it's like, holy shit, what are we doing here? Like what? What? Am I the only person? Is this like the fucking matrix, right? Like, like, you know what I mean, man? Like, like, is my conscience the only conscience? You know, like what the fuck, dude? And you know, that's all, you know, he's like, there's people, everything's real. You know, you pinch yourself sometimes and you're like, you're like, okay, make sure that hurts, you know, make sure there's pain in that. Uh, but then it's like, whoa, is that like just perceived pain? Is that not real, real pain, man? Like what is really, truly pain, man? Stupid, you know, and that's what you do when you're, I do that when I'm sober, man. Sometimes, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't want to come on here and, you know, like, drone and moan. It's like, ah, oh, Kevin Porter, shut the fuck up. Your life's good. It is good. It's good. I'm happy. I am happy. I'm happy with my family. You know, I'm happy sitting here where I'm at. It's just, like, sometimes, though, man, it just, like, feels like there's more, you know, I mean, like, you know, there's more to everything out there, you know. It's just, like, I feel like, like, what, what am I doing wrong, man? It's like I've been, I've been in, like, you know, I've been in, like, I've been stagnant, dude, for so many fucking years at this point, it feels like, you know, and it's like, you kind of ultimately accept, you know, the fate of, like, kind of where you're at, I guess, I don't know, maybe that's just settling, um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, I know when I look back on these, you know, it's like, oh, well, what if, what, what if, you know, you always had that what if, but then you think to yourself, it's like, well, I had kids, you know, I took care of my, I'm taking care of my family, it's not like I'm out of it, it's not like, you know, I'm taking care of my family. I'm doing what I'm, you know, doing, you know, what, you know, I'm supposed to be doing. And like, you, you gotta just, I guess, put that at the fucking forefront that you chose, that the the path that we've gone, the path that we've chosen, you know, cause I could have easily, you know, fucking shit could have not worked out between me and Jessica so many fucking times. Like, it's not like I, it's not like, you know, fuck dude, so many fucking times, dude. So many fucking times. But here we are, though, like, fucking, you know, all these years later, and we're still here. So, you know, it's right there, you know, there's there's love there. There's definitely love. And it's like, it's not saying I, I went down the wrong path or anything, because obviously I did choose the right path. No matter what path I chose, I think it would have been right, but it would have led me down to something else, though. And you kind of just wonder, well, what was that else? And I know she thinks the same thing sometimes. And it's not saying that necessarily is a bad thing. Like you have regrets or something. It's not like, no fucking way do I regret the choices that I've made. But you, you know, you just, you know, you always have that thought, you know, it's like, where was I when I had my first kid? You know, like I just gotten out of school. We were just starting to produce Spin This with Kevin Porter you know, so we just started doing that. I was starting to work with Josh Hodgins, and he had asked me to be the 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 AD for the season of Jackson Horn that they were going to shoot for Fox, which was all not you know regional or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and so that's where I was, man. You know, it's like kind of like that crossroads. Like, well, what if I would have kept going? and did that full season because I ended up, you know, unfortunately, you know, Hodgins and them, they weren't going to be able to pay me. To, it was all pretty much, it was you're doing this job for experience. It's not, you know, and I've done, I've done like any, pretty much everything in my fucking whatever quote unquote career. I use quotations <laughs> on that. Um, you know, I've always done it for free, dude. So it's not the money, but it was also like I needed the money at the same time because me and Jessica moved out. And like basically it's like, well, Kevin, if you don't like start, you know, because it's not like I had a precedent before. This is like coming out of high school when you don't have a job or anything. So it's not like I've I had a precedent of like having money really because, you know, it's like I didn't have a job in high school. Um, you know, like most fucking kids and like, you know, it's like you get into 18, you know, 19, he's like, all right, you got to get a job or you're going to school or something. I wasn't going to college, 
But that kind of was my college, though. If I would have done like you know the Jackson Horn and whatnot, it's like that's the the where I wanted to do. I wanted to do video production. Here I was gonna get do fucking assistant director on this fucking you know Fox fucking TV show. It's like I kind of feel like a dick all these years later because I ended up having to fucking back out. Like I don't I don't know like weeks before production probably I don't know because like they weren't gonna pay me. I needed fucking money and I chose my kid because like I had, you know my dad was still alive at the at that time. So it's like. I had, like, no choice. Like, well, I, it's like I had a choice, obviously. Uh, but, you know, if I would have gone, you know, the starving artist route, and here I am with a brand new baby, you know, like, that probably would have done it in for me and Jessica. It's not like, you know, you can't feed a baby <laughs> off, off fucking, you know, <laughs> working for free, man. I mean, just unfortunately you can't. And, like, so, like, what I was saying with, with my dad being still alive, it's like, I so, like, I'd always told myself that, hey, man, like, if you, whenever you have a kid, you know, whenever, I always told myself, whenever you have a kid, you know, just do better than what your dad did. And my dad, you know, not say he was, like, the worst fucking dad in the world, but he was a fucking alcoholic, and he never was really there, you know? <clears throat> um, so with that being said, it's like, you know, here I am, you know, pff, all this shit's very fresh on my mind. Um, hmm, like, you know, I had to make that decision. So it's just like, that's kind of where the crossroads were. And I don't regret that decision, quitting that show. I don't regret that one single bit, dude. So I feel nonetheless, even though, yeah, here I am raising my kid, I still, you know, was able to experience, you know, hear all this stuff on a lower level, maybe not to the level of, like I'd like to have seen it grow to, but it's like you still got to be proud of the fact that you ran a public access TV show for nine fucking years. You know, like if it wasn't for fucking me, that show's not fucking lasting more than fucking six months. You know, and you've seen so many people, dude, so fucking many people have come up to me. Oh, I have a fucking idea for a movie. You know, you know, you hear that a million fucking times, but how many of those people ever fucking go off and actually do it? You know, like that's, I don't know, it's something I've always like prided myself on in regards to just like, okay, if you want to fucking do it, do it. It's like, oh, you know, like I, when me and Dustin started doing the fucking band, it's like, yeah, we only played a couple shows and shit. And like, basically we we're garage banding it up. But it was like, that was like me, like, Hey, let's do this. And you know, Dustin being, you know, fucking on the same level as me and shit. It's like, let's do this. You know, like I've, I've always like enjoyed that about, you know, my friends, you know, all my friends have always had that artistic quality, that artistic, you know, go getter attitude, you know, and I was thinking about that shit today. It's like, you know, here we are doing this on such a low level in regards to just, you know, we're here in Yakima, that's our fucking scene. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, sometimes you just, I don't know, today I was just thinking, I was like, well, you know, thinking back on that, because you, because you automatically think it's not successful because you're not making money off it. And that's where I stopped myself today. I was like, well, why, why is, why, why does that mean it's not successful just cause I've, you know, I've never, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, this is pure passion that we're, we're working off of, you know, you know, and like, and it's like, so why, why, why does it have to be money that, you know, makes this successful? It's like, I could do this for the next 20 fucking years and I'll still be happy. There's never been one fucking point of doing all this. Like, you know, yeah, you have it in the back of your head. Like, it'd be nice one day to make some money, you know, to cash in. But, like, you know, the more, you know, if you if you would have, like, been, like, Kevin Porter, 19 years old, you know, like, what's your dream? Fucking Comedy Central, dude. Like, what are my inspirations back then? You had fucking Daily Show. You had fucking Chappelle Show. You know, we're talking 2005 and shit. Family Guy's just coming back on the air. You know, sketches and you know, just like that's that's the that's the plan, man. Two thousand fucking five, Comedy Central. But between two thousand five and two thousand nineteen, you know, my eyes are open to what the industry is and like what it represents. And it's like, fuck that, dude. Do I really want to fucking sell my soul for what? You know, fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. You know, like you know, five hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, you're you're gonna get your shit out to more people, but you know, just look at with the advance of technology today and shit. You know, it's just like anybody can see what we're doing. The problem is now, and like, it's just everybody can do something. So it's like there's such an oversaturation of the fucking market when it comes to you have to really stand out, you know, in order to get that next level, you know. And so in a sense, it's kind of maybe even harder now than what it would have been, you know, if we were started in, you know, 99, 
you know, or like the nineties or whatever, doing a public access show. And it's not to say we would have made it then either. Maybe it's probably just as hard then. I don't know, man. It just, it just, you know, like, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but again, just for the fact that, you know, maybe we do stand out in our own way, but again, there's just so many fucking eyes out there. It's just, we're not doing, you know, what is needed in order to catch. I mean, you never know. I mean, that's the thing. You just never fucking know. I guess you just don't doubt yourself in that sense. It's like, we are doing quality work. It's just, you know, people got to fucking, fucking find it, you know? And it's just like, it'll come, if it's, if it's good enough, the cream always rises to the top, man. So, you know, you never know. But again, also just going back to that in the sense, at the same time, it's like, again, like, why am I trying to measure the success of this based on, you know, the popularity or the amount of money it makes off something? It's just like, dude, I'm, I've always done this just cause I'm fucking happy to do it. You know, it's just like, this gives me a fucking outlet. Like I talk about breaking up the monotony and everything. It's like, fuck dude. Like, where would I be if I wasn't producing that fucking TV show every fucking week? Nine fucking for nine years man you know what i mean like what would i be doing just like playing fucking video games like every other fucking normal you know nerdy ass american you know you know what i mean like don't get me wrong i still do that and even if that was me you know it's not to say i would hate that but at the same time it's just like fuck dude like living that life man that day-to-day grind dude you know it's just fucking it's hard it's fucking hard dude and uh i don't know man I don't know. Just again, life is fucking crazy. Um, I guess you just, you really like when you really just break it down, dude, you really just got to fucking value every single moment, every single fucking day. You know, I guess, I guess you really just got to put a, you know, you know, a price. It's just a, a, what's the word? Um, invaluable price. Is that, is that, is that the way it really is? Infinite, inf, infinite price. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. So it's just in this, in, in that saying, you know, again, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm good where I'm at, but in the moments where I'm, you know, having struggles, you know, cause everybody fucking struggles. We're human beings. Everybody has ups. Everybody's fucking downs. You just got to remind yourself of that. You got to remind yourself that, Hey, you know, life isn't that bad. And, you know, we'll take this moment by moment and day by day. You know, even though I may be feeling angry about this now, is it really worth my anger even being put towards something like this? Like, is it worth my time? Half the time, no, it's not worth your time. It's not worth anybody's fucking anger. Anger's a fucking stupid thing, man. Anger's a motherfucker. Anger is a is a is a dirty fucking whore. <laughs> you know? It, it's a piece of shit. It's worthless. It's like it's a waste of our time. Like like, as sappy as it sounds, like, you really do need to put out love as, like, you know, out in your surroundings, man. Just try to try to love people, you know, not be a fucking asshole and, you know, live life, I guess. If that means getting up and going to work and getting up and going to work and getting up and going to work, well, by golly, geez, I suppose that's just what we have to do, and I guess on that note let's go ahead and uh fucking get on in to the meat and potatoes of this episode uh, eric smesthead's on this fucking show guys um eric smesthead he's uh, he's definitely dude one of my best friends and anybody that knows eric knows why dude eric is such a fucking cool dude um any, anytime like if i needed help you know for anything i could fucking hit eric up eric is one of those people like you know, it, it sucks because again, you know, we get back to life and everything, and it's like, dude, fucking recording this podcast last week with Eric. Um, it was like our first time getting together in in fucking forever. Like, you know, like I see him every day, but at the same time, I don't see him because you know, it's not like we can like you know sit at work and talk and shit. But you know, in like a personal level, um, you know, you just like I don't know. I miss those. I miss those days like where we just fucking hung out and you know smoked weed and just fucking drank beers and you know just fucking partied and just like i don't know dude like we talk about it i think we talk about it i forget the conversation specifically i again dude i i fucking you know these are just that's why you just record it and you just put it out the the, you know the fucking universe and shit and it lives there forever um so i guess that's why i don't remember them because i'm just like oh let's i don't know anyway uh (laughs) not to get sidetracked or anything motherfuckers uh, Eric's just, dude, he's, he's one of my best friends, man. He was, he was, uh, he had me as his best man at his wedding last year. Um, you know, I don't take that fucking type of shit lightly, you know, like, um, 
not many people have asked me to be their best man, but Eric Eric Smestad is definitely one of those guys. Uh, I just, you know, yeah, man, I love this dude. Um, I wish nothing but the best for him and his band. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, doing shit on a fucking different, on, a, on, on such a level, dude. Like his band, Bad Habit, dude. It's like, I remember back when it was PUA, dude, you know, previously unannounced. Fucking Jeff Davey, Chris Adolph, and fucking Brad Noble and shit. Like, that's how long, how deep it goes between me and Eric, dude. They're fucking brothers, they're family. Um, so, yeah, dude, fucking Eric is coming up, bro. Eric is coming up. But first, first, we do got to get a little bit of house cleaning out of the way. I should have got the house cleaning done first, then did that intro. It feels like, oh, shit, Kevin Forty, you, you fucking duped us, motherfucker. <laughs> Here you are, <laughs> giving such a passionate, you know, fucking words about your one of your best friends and here you are you gotta fucking drop all this fucking you know inner uh fucking show uh information uh before we get to the again the meat and potatoes of the fucking show uh but really quick guys dude we got a jam-packed fucking weekend dude holy shit so i don't know if you noticed we got two episodes dropping today dude so after you get done listening to the podcast that i would listen to uh if you uh would would choose to do so you can totally check out the totally necessary wrestling podcast we're giving our wrestlemania 35 preview um today thursday uh we're doing this just for the simple fact that we're uh, dude we're fucking so jam-packed this weekend holy shit i am so fucking excited i'm so fucking excited for this weekend guys it's wrestlemania weekend so that means we're covering and we're back on friday tomorrow we're back uh with our post show for wwe nxt takeover new york uh, we're gonna find out who wins the nxt championship tomorrow guys uh, adam cole is taking on johnny gargano and after and just a little bit of preview of the totally necessary wrestling podcast my hot take on that feud is I'm all all Adam Cole, baby. I'm all Adam Cole, fucking motherfuckers. So that's Friday. And then we are covering the Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling show uh, from Madison Square Garden. Historic show, I might add. This is the first time a a wrestling promotion has ran Madison Square Garden since like ni- the 1960s. Um, fucking WWE has a, has had a stronghold on Madison Square Garden for fifty over fifty fucking years at this point, guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. So Saturday historic show, uh, fucking a dude. That's gonna that's gonna be uh, headlined by Jay Lethal defending his IWGP Heavyweight Championship against fucking uh, um, Okada. Which Okada, if anybody's uh, a fan of wrestling, he's like John Cena. He's like the the bit. He's like the best fucking you know the biggest baby face. Uh, the biggest good guy or whatever in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So he's f- challenging for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship this coming Saturday. And then Sunday, we will uh, have a, a wonderful post show for WrestleMania 35. I don't know what time that's coming out because supposedly that show is going to be running past like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. It's going to be the, bit, the longest WrestleMania show in history. So. We're going to cover all of it. I don't know why. I mean, I have nothing else to do on Sunday. So it's like, all right, let's fuck it. Fuck it. Let's watch all eight hours, dude. Let's watch all eight hours of fucking WrestleMania on Sunday. Taking a break this week. I, to- I told you motherfuckers, like, I need to break up the monotony. So that's, I guess we're doing that in the form of professional wrestling this weekend. I'm fucking stoked, dude. All right, I feel better. I feel better. Guys, honestly, when I fucking started recording this fucking opening, I was pretty fucking fucking pretty pissed off ladies and gentlemen so i wasn't that pissed but i was like irritated with everything i was just really annoyed and you know recording this shit now i fucking feel better so thank you uh, for listening dude uh but yeah dude totally check us out this weekend in our coverage of wrestlemania all right ladies and gentlemen again i bring you the main event okay so for the third or fourth time i i think it's the fourth time. we're going to say the fourth time uh record breaking pro- i don't know Damn, Jason Brummett, Brandon Allen, you guys may have Eric Smith said beat, but that just means we got to have Eric on that much more. Um, all right, guys, I give you Eric Smithstead. All aboard! Once it starts going red, that means it's recording. What's up, Eric Smithstead? Welcome to the podcast that everyone listens to, motherfucker. Huh, what's up, man? I am it's ex- good to be back. I'm extremely high. We've been sitting here for like 45 minutes prior to hitting the record button on the computer. Talking shit. Yeah. Getting fucking not drunk. Better jobs and shit. Yeah, that's about that. Not drunk, hey? 
I could have offered you something you didn't ask. Oh, that's good. No, I, it feels good. Yeah, you're like, hey, it feels good. This feels good. We're just getting high. It's just weird to be high and not drunk, though. Why is that? Because I like to get crossfaded. You know, it's my thing. How often? How often do you drink, Eric? That. Why is that relevant? <laughs> I'm just curious. I mean, if you don't feel I pretty answer, much you're... I pretty much drink every day. Damn. But not but not like when people say they drink every day, it, it, it makes it sound pain. like oh yeah, dude, I get fucking wasted all the time. No, I know I actually you rarely you have, get like, wasted. Just a couple drinks to get a buzz, dude. What's weird is I I rarely get wasted. Like Yeah. I'll drink maybe one or two beers. You know day. what you're doing? It's what? called responsible drinking, Eric. It's yeah, exactly I guess. what you're doing. Like, I, I, if I drink, I won't drive anywhere. Mm. Um, That's the I'm, I'm totally down. You know, I'd totally go out to a bar and have a couple beers. Yeah, if Ooh, I know somebody's going to drive, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. But other than that, I don't really do that. Um, I got to go have, home and yeah. drink a couple beers and yeah. rip the bong. Rip the bong a couple times. You know, get a little high. Or, get a, you know, get a little bit of marijuana. Those awesome system. fucking cannabis pens, dude. Ooh. That's where it's at. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So I got two stories for you, really quick. So, firstly, I'd like to, because um, I this is like a you know a running diary of, in a sense of my life and shit. So like it's been a pretty big ever since I started this podcast. I, I haven't I hadn't been drinking, dude. I'd quit it's like an like audio a diary, dude. Diary. Like I don't like cause when you think about it, because like my kids, my grandkids can go back and listen. Like oh, let's listen to two full years of this dude, you know, of grandpa's fucking life and shit. Right. So like, but since I started the podcast, dude, I quit drinking. Like you know, back in February, right. dude. So I've right. been like, I don't know, three or four months without drinking. Ah. Well, just this last week, I jumped off the wagon. Eric. Oh shit! I jumped off the wagon. I had two fucking whiskey and uh, Pepsi's. Nice. Caught a little bit of a buzz. I went to bed and went to work the next day. It was pretty fun, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, it's like you were saying, though. It's like being responsible with your drinking. Because like, I, I was like, man, I don't I don't think I want to drink beer. If I'm going to drink, I'm only going to have you know a couple drinks. I'm not going to get wasted. Mm-hmm. Maybe have a, you know, a couple drinks once a week. I mean, hey, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, so I'm going to worry about that. I caught, That was my one big fear, dude. Was yeah. That, like, I was going to fucking, those first couple drinks, I was going to start craving cigarettes again. And uh, fortunately for myself, dude, I, I was able to fucking not... You know, have those like well, it's here's, completely gone, dude. Here's the thing. Here's completely the thing. Gone. Um, it's much, it's much easier as long as you can stay away for some. If as long as you don't have cigarettes and you're not like close, like when you go back to drinking. Well, that's the thing, dude. It will, it will hit you if you no, smell them. No, no, dude. I, but you I might be at so. the point where. I remember when I quit smoking, like it took me like four fucking oh, years. Yeah. I felt like to quit altogether, dude. So I've I haven't had a fucking cigarette in over like two, almost two and a half years. Wow. So like, That's even awesome. when I was, because there were periods where I quit for like six months, I quit, right? You know, right, right. And then I smoke again. I would not smoke. You know, I quit for a couple weeks, whatever. Um, and even during those times, I would get fucking shit faced drunk still, dude. And I would be like, oh, I would pride myself on it. I remember one night, it was on my birthday, dude. I was like, I'm 30. Fuck it. I don't need fucking cigarettes. And I'm like just talking shit about cigarettes the whole night, dude. And so like I think now if I went out and had a couple drinks, I could fucking – I'm totally going to be See, fine. See, that's cool. But hey. I'm two and a half years without a cigarette though, so it's like completely out of my system. Oh, that's cool. Besides, there's a great alternative to smoking a cigarette after drinking. Smoking cannabis? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, as I said, those pens – so it takes me to my second fucking story really quick. Fucking last Thursday, dude, with Brandon Allen. Mm-hmm. Fucking I hit his pen. The highest I've been since high school. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. Yeah, dude. We, we, we went and did stand-up. And fucking, I was just so high. Luckily, there was like maybe like five or six people in the crowd. And it was like really a loose night. So like I just went up there and just... I, I tried some crowd work that kind of failed miserably. <laughs> it failed miserably, and then I ran through my set, and it was all right. So nice, nice. Bad. But no, well, yeah, cool. go back to those pens, bro. So okay, so last year, um, I really wanted to quit smoking, and so I made it quite a ways. <laughs> um, I just straight up on New Year's Eve, I just quit, like just stopped that was going into this year that was going into last year so 17 to 18 yeah okay so i just like straight up didn't smoke a cigarette and what i did instead like i noticed like you know yeah 
because now they don't allow smoking in bars, you have when you go to the bar or you go out or whatever, there's this pattern of when you're all your, if you're all your friends smoke cigarettes, you know, Which every all my friends still smoke cigarettes. Every too. 20 to every say th- 45 minutes, you're going to go back outside and stand out there. Right. Regardless of if you're smoking or not, but that's just the pattern that you do. I I've taken the same, so, dude. Where I stay inside now. Whenever See? whenever Brandon or Dustin go outside, I'm like, nope, I'm staying inside. Because I, I quit for that reason, so I didn't have to go outside. See, and that's cool. Um, for me, though, you know, Naomi still smoked. Yeah, so that would be the hardest part, having, like... And you know, so they're always around. Yeah. And, you know, okay. So, but what I did is, instead of smoking, I bought a pen. And... Quick re- quickly realized that you could uh, just go rip that outside really quick. You only really need one hit. Yeah. That's she- because you up, if you hit it several times, which I did on a couple of occasions, you get really fucking high. Because you kind of you feel like, okay, I'm outside. It's kind of like I'm smoking a cigarette. So you're, yeah. you know, hitting right. it a few times. And, when you know, when you're smoking... When you're vaping something that's 96% THC, it's going to get you baked. Yeah. And so, like, I would take hit it a couple of times, and by the time people were getting done with their first cigarette, I'm, like, fucking ripped out of my gourd, just, like, laughing. And, like, they're, like, not even paying attention to me. It, so I, I did that for a while, and it worked. Like, I didn't... I would just go take a hit, and it would, wouldn't take away the desire to have a cigarette, but it, like... It helped ease it. Was just kind of like, well, fuck it. Yeah. So, you know? so how? So I made it through to the uh, to our honeymoon. So when was that like May? So or we got we got married in May, and we went on uh, starting like June first is when we went on our honeymoon trip, and I was at the Punk and Dublin Fest. Nice. And. We didn't have any food. We were getting low on money. And I really wanted a cigarette. I'd been drinking for two days straight and hadn't had a cigarette. Didn't have a pen. Didn't have anything. We couldn't bring anything with us because, you know, it's fucking Ohio. It's not legal. So we didn't have any weed. So I was just fucking drunk as shit from drinking beer for two straight days. And I had to smoke. So I did. And... I was like, okay, I'm just going to smoke tonight and then, or, you know, whatever, or the rest. I'm just going to smoke tonight and then whatever, I'll quit again. Well, the next day is when we went back. And when we got back at about 2 o'clock in the morning, so technically I guess that would be into the next day, but when we got back at 2 o'clock in the morning, the our car was dead. Because Naomi had left the dash lights on. Uh, five, Damn, just throwing Naomi under the five bus. Days, five days before. <laughs> it wasn't her. I mean. It was I, an accident. It, it was an accident. Yeah. I, I might have done it, honestly. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was her, though. Just saying. <laughs> no worries. No worries. She doesn't listen. Love to you, me. babe. <laughs> um, but no. So that happened. And I was like, God damn it. I need a cigarette. Yeah, I don't blame you. So, don't blame you one bit, Eric. But that... That kind of brought me back. Yeah. And so I've been smoking. But it, I've gotten it down basically the last... My, my strategy has been the last two years smoking like... If I can smoke one cigarette a day, that's better than smoking two cigarettes a day. And it, so I got it down to two cigarettes. And now it's like, if I really, really, really want one, I'll smoke one. But if I don't, I don't. Dude. And I'm finding more days that I don't. The easier it is. Yeah, dude, that's how you do it, bro. It's like getting getting yeah. the desire, like getting the addiction down to the point where it's like kind of minuscule. Yeah, just makes it a lot easier. You've always been that way, though, dude. Like I remember, like back in the day, like when we used to party all the time and shit. Like we'd wake up in the morning, like what well, the first thing we you know do is like I'd go out and smoke a cigarette, mm-hmm. and you like you know you would go like all the way up until the afternoon without smoking. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like fuck, like you know I I always like. 
not envied, but like I always wanted that, you know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I always wanted to be able. It's like fuck, because you know, like as a smoker, you're like fuck. I'm just like fucking myself. Well, it, up. Yeah, it's it like, makes it easier. I need to quit. It certainly makes yeah. it easier, but like I still feel like I don't. I don't. I just never have wanted to smoke. You don't in give into the urge and shit. Like, I never get the urge to smoke in the morning. Yeah, Some I, a lot of people do. Yeah, no, like, mine was like first thing. Like I would wake up in the middle of the night. Dude. Like I was fucking addicted, dude. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Then again, I, it didn't help that you grew up in a house that was full of smokes. All fucking dude. I think back on it, man. Like my mom was like, "That's some shitty fucking shit, man." Like, oh, we didn't know. It's like, yeah, you fucking did. <laughs> you I jumped. can't fucking breathe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't nah, know. that's fine. Probably, <laughs> probably. I don't know. Your dad didn't smoke. No, dad, he quit smoking did. before I was born. Yeah. See, my kids they and saw me quit. Basically, as soon as they found out that cigarettes yeah. are not good for you, they yeah. quit. Yeah. So that's smart. That was, that was a smart. Thing. I think like, my dad said he quit when he was twenty-five. So, so that's that would a be like age. I quit when I was thirty. That would be like. I don't know, like 1970 or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. It sounds about like the time that they started making those. Now. Like late like, well, 60s. Yeah. I guess it would have been like... So, I don't know. I mean, we didn't live through that time, so it's not like I can be like, hey, yeah, I remember a time when they used to play ads. Dude, dude, he was hardcore. Dude, he was hardcore as shit, though, dude. He yeah. smoked uh, non-filtered palm malls. Shit, palm oils, dude. You think you're a fucking man? Smoke some non-filtered palm oils, man. I always hate Holy it. shit. Whenever I thought of a palm oil, I always thought of like, you know, like being drunk at 2 o'clock in the morning. You barely have enough money to get a pack of cigarettes at 7-Eleven. You're buying palm oil, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. Those were always like... Or if you get a cigarette from an old person. Yeah, my mom. It's either... Uh, it's like a palm oil 100 Ooh. with a cigarette. Ugh, it's yeah. a hurt. Fucking 100 Ugh. suck, dude. Like, I don't yeah. even know why you'd want to smoke a 100. I, you know, I never have. <laughs> I, I never have understood the yeah. uh, the psychology behind that because yeah. it's more tobacco, but it has less nicotine in it. Hmm. So you're getting more of the shit that fucks your lungs up and less of the shit that you want Satisfies from you smoking a cigarette. Yeah. So I don't know, dude. It's like, yeah, I don't know. know. I don't know. It's like I have this perfectly clean vodka, or I got this vodka that I pissed in. Which one do you want? <laughs> we'll take the piss vodka. What are you... <laughs> this is a doll steak show. I'm taking the piss vodka. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, right. Fucking a. Drink, drink piss, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just like I don't know menthols. Oof, I don't. Yeah. I remember going through like a brief period, like towards the end there, where I bought a couple packs of like Cools. I think it was because of like hanging out with Kyle. It wasn't yeah. the Cools I bought. It was the Mar the Mar. Oh, mint those mints. Mint- yeah, the fucking Mar those. Mar breath mints. <laughs> they weren't too bad. Like I didn't. I there was a period I did go through where I did buy those. Yeah, they're all right, I guess. It's funny now. I want. I can't even. I don't even like regular cigarettes. Yeah. What do you I, smoke? King Mount King Mountains. That's all. Well, yeah, like, dude, this is the cheapest shit you're gonna buy around here. How well, much but does the, a pack of cigarettes thing. go for there? Ah, uh, they're still like two fifty. That's not bad. Well, that's like the cheapest. Like, how much is a carton then? Like twenty five bucks. Like, yeah, twenty five, thirty bucks. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, not it's much still change. cheap. Yeah. And, but here's the thing, though, is that like, there's nothing else that's as harsh. Yeah. Like it's got, but I mean, harsh in a good way. Like the reason why people like used to like camels. Because they're like, yeah, yeah camels change. Dude. Grabs you by the fucking dick. Camels fucking change. Now, yeah, and now it's like all like sugary. Like yeah. the, all of those cigarettes are sugary. Marbs are all right. I always they're, like they're all right, yeah. but they're not. Like if, if I had to yeah. buy a production quote unquote cigarette, but it would be ones. Marbs. But that's what I would always buy. It's just I don't know. My it's dad smoked. Same. That's what my dad smoked. My dad smoked Marb Reds. Hmm, Marlboro man. Huh? Yeah, remember the, like the camel bucks and all this. Yeah, I remember my mom had a bunch of like fucking camel shit. Dude, I still have my fucking camel pool cue. Damn, that was Damn. paid for with camel cash. 
Buy a chick that I knew. This they now lives that. in Florida. They don't do that anymore. Fuck no, they don't do that, dude. That was Joe Camel days. Yeah, because I remember we had a. I remember distinctly as a child. Like, Camel cash, had, dude. Well, we had, a, we had the cooler and stuff, dude. We had like this, like one of those can coolers, and it had Joe, oh, Joe nice. Camel on a koozie. Yeah, and he was all in like a fucking in the water and stuff, hanging oh, out that's sick. with a cigarette and stuff, like. I wonder, I've, I've never looked into that, dude, but I wonder how much, like, that paraphernalia shit you could just, like, I don't know if, it's not paraphernalia, like, but, you know what I mean. Propaganda. You, you probably, smoking propaganda, I think that's yeah, what I was looking for. Pretty much. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Like, Advertising, that's for sure. I, know. I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Um, I mean, it was probably, like, 16,000 camel cash or something like that to get that fucking pool key. It's like, I basically paid with my life. It's like, oh, well, each one of those bags of cigarettes are like... I spent 40 years. Seven dollars, so you know that pool cue cost me oh, you know, about one hundred forty thousand dollars or so. And your left lung. <laughs> well, yeah. So you know, who cares about the right one? The right one works. It's fine. Left one, you don't need the left one. Left one's a pussy fucking lung anyway, right? Only hey, I've got two. Yeah. Shit. Shit, I got two. I don't know. I'm proud of you, Eric. I'm proud of you, fucking. Trying to quit smoking. It's 2019. Yeah. Do you really think we'd be sitting here in 2019? Fucking almost 2020. Known uh, you for damn near 18 fucking years. I know, dude. Like this summer, I think it'll be 18 fucking years. Yeah, I'll be 36. Yeah. That'll be 18 years since my 18th birthday party at your mom's house. Yeah, 36, dude. Holy shit. Man, I know. Naomi turns 40 this year. She turns 40 this year? Mm-hmm. I turned 34 this year. Hmm? God damn. You're like, I remember being 34. Fucking Ray's 30, dude. Ray's what the like, fuck? I think they're all like 31 now. Yeah. Yeah. That's just weird. Yeah, right? Like, These are it? people that we've known since they were <clears throat> like 15. Yeah. It's like half our lives we've known each other. You think about that, like when we met, like we we're just teenagers living in our parents' house. We're like, oh shit, we're gonna smoke some fucking weed. Hell yeah. Like, you know, smoking that fucking Alaskan Thunder fucking Warp Tour 2001, dude, just like going crazy. Dude. Like, just remembering back, I was like so high, and I was like, this is like <laughs> insane. Yep. Like, dude, uh, no, one thing I'll always remember is a time that I was, that we were at your mom's house, and on 18th there. And uh, we were chilling in the basement, listening to. It was eighty eight five back when it was like the alternative the, station. The, yeah. Well, the Edge. Yeah. And, and it was like, well, it was like college radio, I guess, right? Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, they Before were like they were playing metal, and I remember I, like you guys were all like passing out, and I took mushrooms, and I thought they were bunk because like I took them at like eleven o'clock, mm-hmm. and. I hadn't like felt anything like by like midnight. I was like, God damn it. And you guys like started passing out because you guys were all drinking. Mm-hmm. And I didn't drink because I didn't, because like you're not supposed to mix mushrooms and alcohol. Well, even at, even at fucking 17, Eric, you're fucking being responsible. <laughs> well, I just, I just knew that because I read a lot about it. I know. Well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So I did it. And so, I, you know, I wasn't feeling shit. And then yeah. like, uh, I remember like, I was like, ah, god damn it. I might as well just lay down. Because everybody else has passed out. So it was like 1, 1.30. And I laid down. And I started feeling weird. And so I like, I put my hand on the wall to get up. And it wasn't, it was like it wasn't there. Like, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? And then I put my hand on it again. And I pushed on the wall. And it like, went boom. A wave like went down it. Like, through the wall. I was just like. It looked like a, I had put like pushed on a waterbed, and it was just like boom, away from me. And I was like, holy shit. And then like blinked my eyes, and it, it went away. Like I pushed on the wall, and it didn't do it. And so I was like, okay, holy shit. And so I'm like sitting there, and like it started to kick in again, and I started frying hard. I was like, oh. And then it went away again. So I got up and turned off the radio because it was playing like some really like nasty metal. And so I just turned off the radio and I sat on that couch with the flower, with the flower print. Yeah. That was out there. And I so I sat on that couch and for the next four hours watched the fucking flowers growing out of it. Jeez. It was so was fucking crazy. Intense, and it was and I was by myself because all you guys night. were passed out. I went upstairs that I was upstairs that night because I remember like 
I remember that night, like, hanging out with, like, Dustin. Mm -hmm. I think we were upstairs playing fucking, like, Nintendo 64 or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I just remember, like, for some reason that night, because I remember the next morning you telling me about that. Mm Mm-hmm. I remember waking up the next morning and you telling me about how you fucking tripped that fucking balls on mushrooms that Mm -hmm. night. And there was nobody else awake in the whole house, so, like, I couldn't be, like, hey, guys, I'm trying. Uh, Is that real over there? Because... Yeah. Holy shit, it was so crazy. Like, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. I didn't think that you could see things that weren't there yeah. on mushrooms, but yeah. apparently you can. Apparently you can. <laughs> I took mushrooms once, like, and it was in that same house. Mm-hmm. And it was me and Trent and I think Dustin. Was that when we watched fucking Fantasia 2000? Because that was fucking was crazy. A, I, sh- I, I remember think, another I time that we did yeah, that. I don't know if that was at my house, though. Like, I sit- oh, I was I there. Remember I remember sitting on the couch upstairs. We watched it. Like, I remember the time. Because it was like, it felt like there was only like three of us there. Like, it was me. Like, because Trent got it from like his cousin or some shit. Yeah, I don't remember. It, yeah, and uh, and then like, yeah. And then, I just like, remember the fucking whales have, coming out of the screen. We had like a window like that. Like a big bay window like that. Mm-hmm. And like, it had no curtains on it. And I remember a cop car fucking, you know, having somebody pull over down our road because we were right off Titan. So oh, yeah. Like, what? And like, I didn't, like, trip or anything. I took, like, half an eighth. I barely felt anything. It felt I like, remember I watching. I think a lot more was placebo. You I, know? I remember watching the part with the whales when they're, like, f- yeah, like first they're, like, swimming in the ocean and then they're, like, flying. Yeah. And it just fucking flew right out of the screen right next to me. I was like, oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh. I always remember the story. Yeah, I was frying hard. I always remember the story you told me about the New Year's Eve. Mm. I think it was like 01 to 02. Oh, yeah, it was 99 to 01. Huh? When I when I fried my balls off. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was 99 to 01. You know, 2000, 2001. Or I mean, yeah, 99 to 2000. Oh, no. actually. I think. No, dude, that was or Maybe like it was 2001. Dude. That was like it was like 01 to 02. Well, oh, maybe it was actually because like right. we were all hanging out because you hung, you were hanging out with fucking Trevor. Yeah, fucking, and you're you right. were at John's house. Mm-hmm. And that was, it was like I was a soft, I was a solid sophomore because it was right okay. During our, it was like right in the middle of that shit happening. Okay, that it was makes only sense. Like six months, our whole crew of people, like that original crew, of like when it was the foyer posse. Right. It was like a good like school year, I guess. That's all it was. Like one solid good school year where we all just fucking hung out and partied and then shit. Yeah. I'm Somewhat okay. disintegrated and people, you know. Right. In different ways. Okay, but, so that would have, okay, that makes sense then. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Take an acid. That, that was fucking it. Acid nice. that has mescaline in it. Yeah. Don't do that. Do not, don't do that if it's your first time hallucinating on anything. Because let me tell you what. The only, yeah. You might just fry for 36 hours. Yeah, that's right. Because you told me... Call, like, all your, I... call all your friends and tell them that they need to stop doing drugs because they're going to lose their minds. Oh, no. Sh- I remember you calling me, dude. I remember that now. Yeah. That's it. Yup. So... Yup. Okay, so a friend of mine gave me some acid, took two, two drops of it, and... Uh, that wasn't a great idea because I didn't really know a whole lot about all of that stuff yet. <laughs> I had like what's acid? I had read about it and I was like, "Huh, that would be interesting," but I did not know, however, that it would have mescaline in it. And when you mix those two drugs together, it can be very terrifying. And I'm pretty sure on top of that, I also had a panic attack. So it kind of like scary moment. <laughs> It was scary uh, 36 hours of moments, actually. Jeez. So, okay, so on new, so that New Year's night, I took it, and I did certainly start frying, and I was, I was awake all night listening to Bob Marley's uh, Greatest Hits, that um, legend. That sounds album. terrifying. <laughs> and so I listened to that all night. And then everybody else in the house was off doing their own thing, getting high, doing whatever. So I was just sitting in the basement listening to that. And then I had to go home, but I was still frying my balls off. But I managed to drive home. And I got home, and I went in my bedroom and tried to stay in there as long as I could. I had to talk to my parents and try to act normal, which I did. Kept a cool head. 
And that night, I'm thinking, okay, so I went to bed. And I was like, okay, so I'll wake up and I'll be all right. Holy shit, that was way too crazy. So I go to bed and wake up. I still feel the same way. Yeah. I still feel like... High as fuck. High as fuck. And like, you have these like racing thoughts. Where you're like, you're like... It, so like, Vesclin's like really like introspective. So like, it makes you... It doesn't make you see shit. It doesn't make you laugh. It makes you think about all the stupid bullshit in your that you're doing yeah. in your life. And how much better you could be doing. And right. just like... You just, but you can't stop thinking about it. I need to do you my just, homework more. You just keep like focusing on it, yeah. and um, just gets worse and worse. All the all the negative thoughts in your psyche come out. Ooh. You face, you know, face your inner demons. People talk about this as like um, like destruction of the id, yeah. where like literally the things that make you you. Become separated from your consciousness. Yeah. So, like, it makes everything, in a way, like, feel novel. Like, it's the first time you've ever done it. And it's just, like, it's really scary because it's, like, you feel like you're losing yourself. Like, you're, like, losing your mind, literally. Bro, I've been there. In a sense, like, and I got there off fucking weed. Yeah. Well, this lasted for 36 hours. Yeah. My, well, my last <laughs> were like, I would say just about the same, dude. Yeah. Because, like, we were high. I was high for over 48 hours. I know that. Mm. Like, just at a base level being stoned, but you're fucking out of it. Like, like we, but, like, you gotta, like, remember, like, when I when I tell you this, like, I, I got it off weed, dude. Like, I had, like, all this, like, bubble hash that we fucking ah. made. And I that poured like it. a whole, I poured like over an ounce of fucking weed in this tiny bit of fucking brownies, like cookie brownies, right? Ah. Uh. We just took like a couple nibbles, dude. And like, that was it. That was it. Like I had a whole ounce within like this 12 by 12 fucking pan, dude. Jesus. And like, cause Jessica only took fucking one bite, dude. She took one fucking bite. And like, I say that cause like just, it was horrible, dude. Cause like, it just like, it was the most fucked up I had felt. Like, since I'd given up, like, it was, like, booze, kind of, but it was more intense. Yeah. And, like, it was, like, those were fucking thoughts and shit. Like, mm. I just, I had to kept telling myself, I'm like, you're just stoned. I, I you probably I, triggered deep breaths and shit. You probably triggered, you probably triggered yourself a panic attack. Well, like, I didn't panic, though, dude. Like, I was just well, really, like, Jessica fucking panic, though. It's, no, I mean, in a panic attack, yeah. you know, it's not like you're doing anything but like in your head that's like what you psych- feel like this was like a psychedelic experience though bro like that's I'm, the closest i've ever had because i've never done acid i've never mm. done mescaline like i've my my limit my my i'm very limited in regards to what psychedelics i have used right the only one really being salvia fucking divinora <laughs> which that we could we could talk it's about not that. even really on the same plane though it's different but it's like you still you still fucking hallucinate though. oh yeah for like a very it's not 36 it's hours again. it's like a minute and a half dude like you <laughs> fuck dude it but, might as well yeah. be though dude i remember the first time i tried that was that um because like shit we got dude was different compared to like what came out because it was all legal remember oh yeah and but like they came out it seemed like it was like 2010 when they started selling it in the stores mm-hmm. and that wasn't the same shit that's not the same type of shit that like i don't know i didn't go like experimenting with a bunch more fucking types but the one time i, I tried somebody got it from the store and i was like all right i'll try it they're like oh pick out your music that you want to listen to man i'm like all right i've done this before guys like doesn't matter what type of music you're you're in for you're going to like hell be, you know it's yeah. like a nightmare kind of thing like because you fight it and you just have this huge this horrible fucking trip where you're like am i dead am i alive and like it's an out of body pretty much you know? that's it's like pretty good way to describe it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like these people are like trying to prepare me and i'm like dude i've done this before and i, t- I take a hit i'm like oh it's like feels like i barely took a bong rip you, you know what i mean yeah. Like not even that and it was just like so i don't know exactly what was out on the market but i just know the shit that fucking that we used to get, like Trent would get, it was like he ordered it offline, dude. Yeah. And it was like... It was like, completely I, unregulated. Yeah, the first time I fucking did it, like everything turned into Legos, dude. As far as I know, you can still get that shit the same exact way. Fuck that, dude. Like, I I mastered it though, towards the end, dude. There was one time I remember doing it with you and Trent and we were at my house on 3rd. Like, by the time we moved to 3rd Ave, mm-hmm. um, fucking one time, because I, I, I figured it out, dude. Like, you just can't fight it. 
Like yeah. If you just don't fight it, you're going to actually just have a really accept good trip. It. Yeah. You have a great trip. Because I sat there and I watched your wheelchair fucking wheel spin like a fucking <laughs> Ferris wheel, dude. Straight up, dude. Yeah. Like, that's the closest I've gone to like hallucinating, dude. So the pot brownies, though, dude, like going back to that, dude, like it was like a good solid 36 hours. I woke up fucked up the next day, dude. Yeah. And that's happened to me a couple times for fucking edibles. Yeah, well, the first time Naomi ever got high off anything, mm-hmm. she took edibles. Ooh. And Ooh. that happened. Oh, let's see. Yeah. But here's the thing. From all the things that she's described, so, like, you know, from all the things that she's described about it, it's the telltale signs of a panic attack. And if you look, yeah, if, you look into, like and if you look into, and if you look, if you look into it, yeah, you're right. Um, if you look, actually you look into it, it's relatively common for people the first time they've had like a larger amount of marijuana, um, edibles really trigger panic attacks. Yeah. Like, especially if it's like something that, um, you know, you're genetically susceptible to, especially if that, Uh but it, and even people that don't, haven't ever shown signs of panic attacks it can bring it out in them yeah. i just i just feel like i don't know the time that we and jessica did because like she was telling me about the shit she went through dude like it was scary dude like it was really fucking scary like i had to like fucking look all right call you gotta like man and she's like panicking dude like fucking just like do we call the cops do i call the ambulance like her no. mind was racing so yeah. fucking much yeah. dude and you it was just, just have like, to fight it and i'm well, no man i just like i sat there and i just accepted it i was like all right i'm really fucking high and, like, I do this shit on yeah, stage, dude. Yeah. Like, I use this as a bit, dude, where, like, I just, like, I, I truly was, like, like, I, whew, like, I was, like, at one point, I was, like, all right, just, I don't know, it was, like, I was fucking wasted, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I didn't fucking panic as much as she did, but, yeah, I can understand where somebody would say, yeah, it's, like, but it felt like, I don't know, it just felt like, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, you know, it echoes and echoes, and, like, you're, like, just, you're, like, you know... I don't know. Man. Yeah, it's fucked up, dude. It can be hard to hold on. Yeah. I mean, but you just do. Yeah. It's like all you can really do is be like, okay, so I took a drug. Eventually, it's gonna wear the off. effects are going to wear off. Yeah, that's what I had. And to I will be myself. fine. Yeah. yeah. Think about in the thousands of years that humans have been consuming cannabis. Yeah. No one's died. No one's died. No one's gone crazy. Unless you have, like, I'm not going to be the first the, person in the world for this to happen. They do say though, if you're like have the like the schizophrenic trait, yeah. using cannabis is not a good thing. <laughs> they do. They are showing studies now. That, yeah, and I mean, any drug really could trigger yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, they're especially not supposed to do mushrooms. Yeah. Right. Right. But on yeah. the other hand, we've also shown that taking mushrooms and acid can cure schizophrenia. <sighs> can also heal like that's what they're showing so, out with the ptsd mm, fucking showings. like when it's like, when it's properly administered what's they're it? showing DMT, really right it's yeah like dmt yeah well lsd though too yeah well any like was it nixon got rid they're of, doing like, trials on um psilocybin too psilocybin as um uh, anti-depression well they're actually like borderline almost going recreational with it now i mean oregon's supposed to be on the ballot this fall right yep that's probably going to get passed. <laughs> yeah. I bet it's going to get passed. I think it's time to move to Oregon. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Well, I mean, just hop on over, dude. Like, right? I, I, I enjoyed, Man. like, when they opened the pot stores. I mean, that's just crazy how we can buy weed, though. Like, I know. The whole entire West Coast, dude. I mean. I don't know. I could go buy some right now. Like, I can go. I can fly into Vegas, dude, and fucking just smoke weed. Because, like, why? Because, like, I don't know. Not to say it's, like, it would deter me from going places if I can't, like, smoke weed or anything. But, like. I do this bit, dude, where it's like, I can't see myself fucking going back to like ground, you know, to like, you know, start over and going to like, like, why would I want to move to Texas where I can't smoke weed legally? Yeah. Why would like, I don't know, Indiana, like, you know, like, why am I going to move to it? But besides that, like, why would you want to move to Indiana in the first place? <laughs> yeah. Like, same thing with Ohio, dude. It's like, I understand. Mm-hmm. I see, I always hear these like wrestlers and the famous people come from Ohio. It's like, why the fuck? No wonder they're famous because they get the fuck out of dude, Ohio. Yeah, like, dude. Ohio <laughs> fucking sucks. It's yeah, just you were a there. <laughs> fucking sweaty ass fucking yeah. bullshit place. I mean, it's pretty, coast. I guess. I like, like being on the West Coast. Dude. The country is pretty, but it's like, dude, it's fucking. It, the humidity over there. It's fucking shitty, dude. Yeah, like that whole side of the fucking country, dude. Like up and down the East Coast, dude. Like it's bad. Like we're lucky it's, we got like desert fucking yeah. heat. 
And it gets, I know. It gets hot here, but I mean, we don't have to deal with fucking humidity, dude. Yeah. No, dude, the humidity is the worst. Yeah. It's like so bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, I was sweating my balls off from the time we got off the fucking airplane till, we, till when we got back on the fucking airplane. Like, and you guys were in a tent too. Weren't oh you? yeah, that's the worst. You're, so you come back to your tent after the whole day, and like you're fucking. And it's feet. fucking muggy oh, in there, dude. dude. Oh, it's awful. The, I bet. Well, fucking like mosquitoes. There actually was not a lot of bugs. Strangely enough, yeah. I think it was too early in the season. Oh, okay, but okay. it's yeah. Strangely enough, we didn't really have any problems. Yeah. We bought bug spray too, but we yeah. didn't need to use it. That's what's up. Um, I've been to Florida, and, like, I went in, like, April, so it wasn't that bad, but it was still yeah. warm out. I mean, Well, yeah. Well, I mean, when we were there, the hottest it got was 80 degrees, mm-hmm. but it was 80 degrees and 100% humidity, so it was fucking sweltering. Yeah. Like, you, and you just keep sweating. You, like, you, like, if you stop sweating, it's because you're dehydrated. And as soon, like, literally the moment that you consume some liquid, uh-huh. you'll sweat it out again. Yeah. Like, you'll just start sweating again. It's fucking insane. You, you guys had a rental car, right? Yeah. I was just hung out of my rental car. You know, in retrospect, <laughs> in retrospect car, we should have totally fucking done that. Yeah. There's actually a guy that was parked next to us that camped. That uh-huh. That's what he did. He just fucking left his car on all night with the air conditioning on. I would do it. I would fucking do it, dude. If I had the money to fucking pay for the gas, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I was I'll like, do it, dude. that's... Wow. I went camping once one year, dude, because we'll, we go to this place like Chief Joseph Dam. It's uh-huh. up at, uh, like, Brewster. Have you ever been up that in the Okanagan? Not really. A little bit. It's but... kind of a back, back, uh, backwards, hick, fucking creepy. Oh, kind of yeah. Place, you know? I know but that. I know that It's still kind of cool, much. though. It's still kind of cool. But, like, it gets really hot up there during the you summer and shit. around here, all right, yeah. boy. It's, like, right on the Columbia and shit, dude. And, um, what the fuck were we talking about? The Okanagan? Oh, t- oh, the tents. Okay, sorry. So, like, in camping and stuff. And, like, there yeah, there was one year, dude, which was so bad. I just sat in my car, like, one afternoon, dude. I You're just, just like, fuck out. this. I sat in my car. <laughs> I'll fucking do it, dude. Like, fuck that. Like, my that's the one thing that pissed me off about my mom, dude. I re- it's not that I resented or anything, but it was just, like, you know, like, when we were in high school and shit, like, she would never leave the air conditioning on. She would, like, oh, it costs too much. It costs too much. Like, she had always had money for, for fucking cigarettes uh-huh. <laughs> and everything else. But we don't, oh, we can't set, you Oh, know, air conditioning? Got, in the middle okay. of summer, dude, like, oh, just open the window, and there's fucking, like, you know, it's just gross, dude. It's just, you're just, I remember those summers being horrible, so, like, now it's, like, I have PTSD over that, so I'm, like, I have, I'm not, I will pay the money to fucking <laughs> yeah. hate my fucking air conditioner. No, I, there, I've noticed some things like that as being an adult, hmm. so that, like, you know, my dad would, you know, if I ever left a door cracked or anything like that, he'd be, like... Well, God damn it, we're trying to cool the outside. Blah, 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 blah. Or, God damn it, you trying to heat the outside. Blah, 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 blah. I think I've heard you, Dad. And like, before. right? Yeah. So, now, like, when I go smoke a cigarette at my house and it's in the middle of winter, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I leave that door wide fucking open. Eat a fucking dick. <laughs> fuck you, Dad. <laughs> like, Come on over, John. <laughs> like, I just leave that bitch open. I don't yeah. even give a fuck anymore. I'm like, you know what? I'm 35 fucking years old. I don't give a shit. I pay for this shit. Yeah. So, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck you know? It. Like, god damn it. And what? You save $5 yeah, over a, a month? Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People were like, I don't know. Frugal, I guess. I don't know. It's like, it was weird kind of growing up in the 80s. Like, we didn't really like grow up. Like, you did kind of, I guess, a little bit more. But like, yeah. I don't really have any too many memories. I have a couple memories of like 89. Like, nothing, like, really. I was, like, four, you know? Yeah. 90s was when, like, I kind of grew up. It was just kind of that. It was a different... It's like we were talking before we started, like, you know, just how society's changed over the years and stuff. And just, like, it was such a different way of growing up compared to what it is now. That's know, true. It's, in a way, it was the same, but at the same time, it, it's it's not, you know? And yeah. Then, like, the attitudes of the generations past weren't, like... You know, like, you, you know, my parents would just let me go and do whatever the hell I wanted. Yeah. Like, there wasn't yeah. a lot of fucking, like, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm, I don't know. I mean, it seems like your dad, your parents were a little bit more strict on you than, you know, my mom was. But So I, I understand, I guess it's just, I don't know. It just, like, seems like there was a little, like, a little bit more recklessness. I don't know. Well, okay. Here's a big. Smoking inside around kids like we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, like... Well, I mean, here's a big thing that happened. And I mean, 
I remember my dad like bitching about it changing. Is that you know, like the idea of having to like set up an appointment to go hang out with other kids mm. okay. in your neighborhood. Yeah, like you just and it just you just. Your kids just go outside and go meet the neighbor kids and they go figure out what the fuck they're going to do for the day. Exactly. Like, that's what we did. Yeah, that's all we did. You know, but like, even in my age group, I remember like, some kids couldn't come out unless you had like, called them first. I remember there's a couple kids that were like that. And it was just like, (laughs) what? Yeah. Like, dude, you're a kid. It's a summer day. Yeah, Why the no, fuck aren't you outside breaking some shit somewhere with us? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. What the hell else are we supposed to be doing here? Causing mischief. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. That's just how I remember <laughs> hanging just, out in yeah. my neighborhood. I mean, we, you know, and we wouldn't go fucking break shit all the time or nothing, but we'd certainly go fucking walk around the neighborhood and explore shit and yeah. fuck around. Yeah. We, I remember, like, I don't know, if, like, how bad this was, it's kind of stupid, but we, we, I don't know, this is, my mom was, like, a single mom, dude, so, like, my yeah. mom was never home, dude, so, like, we were left unsupervised a lot. Yeah. And so, like, one time we grabbed a can of gasoline and went to the park and shit, and, like, we were like, ooh, it was cool, because remember, like, the old, the old parks that they used to have, they used to have those metal toilets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know when the decision was made, like, to put those in, like, well, yeah, let's put aluminum fucking, the, the <laughs> yeah. worst thing to sit on, like. Well, they don't want you to stay too long, see. Exactly, I guess. And I remember I was just dumping it in, like, in a toilet and fucking lighting it on fire, and it was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. This is badass. <laughs> running, running away scared, and, like, you know, nothing right. happened or anything. Yeah. But, like. You know, Innocent just, fun like that, man. Yeah, because, like, kids, like, I, you know, it's not to say I coddled my fucking kids or anything, but, like, when I think about it, like, I'm not going to let my kid, you know, really, like, you know, go that far, you know. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It is different. Well, fuck around here. Where are they going to go? <laughs> yeah. Kind of out here a ways. Well, like, even before, though, like, we lived, like, I don't know. And it was a lot of it was age. Like, because no, well, yeah. when I look back, and my mom was letting me, like, I, I don't know if I told, I think I told her on the podcast. But like I did, I, like my mom, like when I first moved to Yakima, dude, like let me go to McKinley Elementary, which was like probably like I don't know, ten blocks away, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or, not maybe not ten blocks, but at least like you know a good amount where like you know maybe you're gonna let your kid go down the road a little bit, hang out, you know, yeah, five years old. But like she's like, oh well, I grew up in the fucking fifties, you know, sick, and like you know life was different then, you know, and it's like then like when we grew up it was like gang there was a lot of gang problems you know in yakima and shit dude like you know and like i don't know a cop picked us up and stuff and like you know took us home that's like a pretty vivid memory it's just like i wouldn't let my kid do that like, yeah i don't know i don't know my mom was kind of fucked up in that sense though dude she like there was no there was a there was for some reason there was no problem leaving us home alone at a young age i don't know if that happened to her when she was a kid but yeah something well i mean you know, after my mom died, I mean, I pretty much well, I was in the same boat. My dad was gone all the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had a lot of home alone time. Yeah. But. And you were just, you were an only kid, dude. Yeah. Like that, I don't know if that would be worse or like, I don't know. Like, because I had my sister and we hung out a lot. I don't know. I had MTV. Yeah, I just watched all the See, we had <laughs> cable, dude. We were always very inconsistent with cable. I had... I had cable TV, and I had a Super Nintendo. That's all you need, dude. That's all you fucking... That's like the dream, <laughs> dude. And your parents aren't home. So, like... You know what you to know. make the basic of foods? You can feed yourself. But I didn't have a lot of money for games. My dad would very rarely buy... I, you know, I'd get maybe one game a year. Well, at least so, that like, makes that game fucking count. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I'd get good ones. But, like... I remember one year I got Star Fox. I was like, oh, I was never good at Fox. Sh- played the shit out of that game. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. miss it. I, it sucks. You can't fucking, uh, you can't get it on a. I guess okay, you can now. Uh, I think the new super, that new mini Super Nintendo has yeah, it on it. It was on. Yeah, they also had like the unreleased like second. Well, one you can't. Too. Uh, you can't. Yeah, they do. They. 
you can't um, get it. You can't get it to work though on any of the emulators. I know that. Same with like a Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. Like, fucking Mario Kart doesn't work. Fucking. It's because they use that fucking three D effects chip. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's like an. It's basically they did that to like boost the the output of the game. Okay. Like the it, that's why it has better graphics. The blocky ass better graphics. Yeah. Okay, you play like if you play you play fucking Mario Kart now, dude. It's like. It's insane. Like, I don't know. It's just like, that's another weird thing. It's just like fucking video games, dude. Video games are quite literally fucking crazy. Like, I let my kids, like, we'll, we'll, play, we'll get on and play, like, emulators and shit, dude. And, like, you know, they, they're like, oh, shit, this is hard. Like, they'll play Sonic and, like, this is hard. It's Mario. This is hard, you know? Like, because, like, it took, Because like, they were hard. Yeah. It was about the gameplay. It wasn't about all the graphics. Right. That's why those that games sense. are so... That makes sense. ...are so much better in a lot of ways, is that they didn't have, you know, they couldn't have these gigantic-ass, beautiful landscapes that you walk your character through that look, like, damn near indistinguishable from the real thing. Right. You know? You had 16 bits, and that was it. One of my favorite fucking sports games to play was on Sega Genesis, dude, like NHL fucking 94. Mm. That's, like, one of the best fucking hockey games ever, dude. Yeah. Like sport, yeah, dude, straight up. Or like, um, I remember playing like bases loaded fucking baseball. I was going to say baseball. I had World Series baseball, dude. Yeah. I had, I think it was super ba- super bases loaded was the one that I had. Was that, no, that wasn't like MLB based. Was that fucking. I mean, it had all the. Did well, it? Actually, you know what? I don't remember. I don't remember the names of all the games. I remember, I remember they had. No, like, it had fake teams. Yeah, fake teams. Yeah. yeah. That's, well, it's like, that's what's... But like, it was a cool game, though. Like, I, I'll go back and play, like, the Ken Griffey Jr. one on Super oh, Nintendo. Oh, yeah, yeah. That shit's fucking hard, dude. That's a hard fucking game. Well, I mean, the first Ninja Turtles game. I that's one I, of the hardest... That's one of the hardest games on the Nintendo. I can't stand that game. I remember as a kid, I fucking hated that game. Oh, yeah. Like, Everybody it, hated it. But I just, like, it was never fun, you know? It was like, you play the arcade game. It's just, hard enough that it's not fun. Yeah. yeah. The arcade game was fucking great. Yeah. And then, also you know, hard. All those, like, like they progressed I don't, so well. I haven't, I haven't been able to beat it. Still. I've never, I've never beat I've gotten, like, I'll get, like, three, I get four, to the five. last, dude, I get to the last level. Yeah. And then I die. Fuck. Uh, like, dude. I, I've gotten to... I've gotten to the last boss. I've gotten to Shredder. Yeah. But it's like, it sucks because that last level is really hard. Then at the end of that last level, you have to fight Krang. And then you fight Shredder after that. That's the way all of them are. It's walk, just, dude. you just fucking die. I always. There's just, it's yeah. a lot harder. Yeah. It's a lot harder than any of the rest of them. I play, uh, I'll play Turtles in Time with Jameson. Yeah. And like, I can only because he's eight, so like he doesn't like he play he can play pretty well, but like you know, I give him a couple of years and he'll play a lot better right. type scenario. So we'll make it to the fucking end, dude, and then I'll just like I'll get I'll be have used most of my fucking shit, dude. It's just like it, he dies at Krang, and then I can barely get past him on my own. It's just like, uh, like, I don't have enough fucking continues at that point. Shitty. But I remember that one time we played it on emulator, dude. At your Fuck house, yeah. Your parent, at your dad's house. We kicked your, its ass yeah, in like 20 computer. minutes. Yeah, we did, dude. We fucking like, because you had the little controller. Mm-hmm. And then you played it on the keyboard. Yeah. I remember getting good at playing, because that's what I had to do at my house, too. Yeah. Know? I never had like a controller either. Yeah. But that's one thing I bought since as an adult for this computer. Oh, nice. This little adapter. I bought this case off Amazon, dude. It's like, has every single uh, USB fucking. Like for the PlayStation, the 64, Super Nintendo. Oh, so I nice. downloaded a bunch of fucking emulators and ROMs on my computer. So I just plug it in whenever I want and I can just play it on my computer. Oh, badass. So I, yeah, I played this. Because the, the one thing on that Xbox hack, dude, the, the Nintendo 64 fucking emulator doesn't work. Mm. So the, I can play the emulator off my computer, though. So I just go and fucking emulate off, of the, you know, ah, off the computer. Go. And I love 64 games, dude. I thought the 64 was like, I don't know about you, man, but like. When they tra- when we transitioned from the Super Nintendo to the Sega, like sixty four was like to me is by far a very f- superior fucking system compared to the PlayStation. Yeah, the original PlayStation. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I I'll agree with that. Um, there was a lot of really great sixty four games. Yeah. Even, goddamn it! Even though they 
made it into a little kids game. Star Fox 64 was fucking awesome. Ah, oh, man. I actually, I don't think I ever played 60, the one on 64. I only played it on the Super Nintendo. It, they fucking, um... Is that, like, considered to be a good game, or, like... It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd play it. Yeah. Um, it's cool that, that they had a, a battle mode. Oh, that's cool. And, uh... I don't know. It's just, it's a pretty good game. I remember Super Mario 64... <laughs> I remember playing that. It's weird though, like so on the original Star Fox, they all like are like bleep, 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 bleep. like yeah, they all the fake yeah. weird language. Well, when they when they made the one for sixty four, um, they like turned all the voices into like it's all in English. You can understand what they say, and they're all like I don't know. It, they're all like really a lot more cartoonish. Mm. So it's like. A lot less serious, a lot more like, or a lot less serious of a game, I guess you could say. Because mm, in the it. in the first one, like you have no idea what they're saying. Like, it's just like so you just huh, gotta make up weird. the dialogue in your head. Yeah, like, like go fucking kill him, Star Fox. Right? Yeah, motherfucker. Go murk these bitches. Murk these motherfuckers. <laughs> like I don't know, but it was a pretty it was a pretty fun game. But I mean, Goldeneye. Look, yeah. There's, now, there's a fucking game that is still fun to this day. Straight dude. up. Fuck I wish I had yeah. a way to play it, but I don't. That's what you gotta do, dude. Just fucking download... You gotta just download the emulator, dude. Buy the... Because you could just buy, like, for, like, 10 bucks, and you just get the 64 fucking... Just fucking rock it, dude. I don't know. But you gotta play it on, like, multiplayer and shit. Yeah. Dude, that's one thing, dude. Because um, I, I do... I wish like, they had... They still had the fucking remake. There was a, there was a PS3 version of fucking... Goldeneye. Was there really? Yeah, they had fucking up, updated the all the graphics and shit like that, like completely reskinned it. It was all like high quality graphics. And they released it on the PlayStation? Yeah. Wow. But then they fucking I don't know what happened, but it got taken off. Well, I heard there's there's a lot of like a lot of like different people own have ownership within that game. There's like mm. a lot of fucking like shit that legal fucking whatever. Jumbo, dude. Yeah. yeah, it's just like it's real pain in the ass apparently cuz you would think that'd be a game that you would, like, Call of Duty now. We should have, like, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's what makes it so great that there was only one, you know, for the 64. Because all the other J- James Bond games weren't the same, dude. Yeah. I mean. Like, when they came out with the one for, like, was The World's Not Enough or whatever? Yeah. Like, was it with Halle Berry or whatever? Yeah, I never played that one. I played it, and it was, like, I mean, it was it was a, it was was fun, but it was different, though. It wasn't the same. I had, uh, I had the one, f- uh, that. The from from Russia with love one. Okay, I, never I think that was that. for PS2. Okay, so that was, yeah, that's fucking. But yeah, then you get to the PS2, dude. Like that's when Sony took over, dude. Like instantly, yeah. dude. Like I didn't like I didn't like the PlayStation, but when the when the, the PlayStation Two came out, dude. Like it was yeah. that Xbox, and the GameCube was good too because I ended up getting a GameCube a couple years after the fact, like 2005. What and about I, the 3DO? I never played 3DO. <laughs> What the fuck's 3DO? I had one for a little bit and I sold it what, to what? the game store. I don't 3DO. Even remember, I don't even think, remember. Like, I've known you this whole time. You've never fucking told me about what? 3DO. Well, okay, so check it out. So I, I got it. Uh, one of Naomi's clients. Oh, this is recently. Her son. Okay. Like, got rid of all his shit that he had at his mom's house that had been sitting there for fucking five years. And she's like, oh, do you want to do that? You know. So she, so she asked Naomi to help her sell this shit. Mm-hmm. And so I've got a stack of CDs that's like, basically think of every quintessential 90s grunge and rock CD that yeah. came out. Okay. I've got all of them. <laughs> uh, Jeez. Like it's it's so funny, dude. It's totally like all the like, Nirvana CDs and stuff, and like yeah, pretty much. I or like I didn't see it actually. You know, there wasn't Nirvana, but it's just like Alice every one of those big albums. Okay, you know the big album from Nirvana. each band. Yeah, okay. kind of a thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, I got like, I'm sure Nevermind's in there. Yeah, but um, it's such a great album. I went back recently and fucking like listened to like Nirvana, dude. And, like I watched this documentary on YouTube. This uh-huh. guy like. 
they just like a couple years ago took like like retraced all the steps of like Kurt Cobain had his last like forty eight hours. Uh, so he went to all the places. Like there's some hotel like off fucking I don't I don't know if it's Broadway or not, but it's like kind of like if you're going up towards the zoo and shit. If you're going uh-huh. up, like past Ballard and stuff. Oh, okay. In that vicinity, but kind of like all the way on the far right end of the city. Okay. I guess it'd be um fucking the east side. No, what? yeah, east side. Uh, anyway, fucking yeah, but he's like goes to this hotel, stays, goes in the room that he was in, and shit, dude. It was like it was kind of cool, like huh. I don't know. I went to this restaurant, shit, and, like was talking about it. He's like, oh, I had the enchilada. It was delicious. Like I don't know. I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'll Interesting. Post, I'll post it in the show notes. So you don't find it. So oh, there you go. People can fucking link into it. So huh? I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, the three D O. Yeah. So I had so one of the things I got was a three D O. Which was a kind of well, a pre a competitor to kind of Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, sixteen bit right systems, and it it was very it was like the next console after the Dreamcast to have a CD. Mm, okay. So it was like before PlayStation, but just before PlayStation, kind of. Yeah, because I remember when the Dreamcast came out, that was yeah, it's pretty lackluster. It felt like. Well, know. you know, and it's funny because it was actually a pretty revolutionary system. Uh-huh. It's just it came out a little too early. Yeah. Because that's the first. That was the first game system with a CD. Right. It was the first game system with internet. Yeah, I, I never really played the, the Dreamcast too much, so I, I guess like me saying that, it just seemed like I remember. I oh, it was totally a flop. Yeah, but I had a friend that had it, and like I just remember not playing. But people that. were just not ready for that in a game system yet, and all you know, it wasn't until you know the PlayStation because it was like a year, came along like, what, before ninety like seven. Yeah, you know, like, what was weird was about like the three DO is that. It wasn't made by a specific manufacturer. Mm-hmm. There was like a specific set of specifications that manufacturers had to make, and they hired and they hired these companies to make the three DO. Mm-hmm. So the, like, there was a couple of different manufacturers, though, depending on which what you got. It's a different manufacturer. That's kind of weird. Yeah. No wonder a flop. <laughs> Fucking jeez. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't... Well, it wasn't a terrible idea because it wasn't... Then the game company themselves weren't responsible for building the things. Mm, so just but they basically just contracted out the work. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but, yeah. It, it flopped. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of games were on there? Um... Some of the same games that came out on other systems. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure Mortal Kombat. Um, you know, yeah, like okay. the, the games that were around at the time. I got you. I got you, motherfucker. But they just, yeah, they uh, they flopped. Yeah. But anyway, I got one of those and I got rid of it. How much you make off? How much you make off oh, it? Not, not much. Not much. Yeah, like 10 bucks? Probably. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> I mean, they go for like 50 bucks on eBay. That's not bad. I just discovered eBay fucking today, actually. Really? I never had shopped on there until today. And huh. Thought, like, well, it's like fucking, like, I've been going, like, if you look over there, I'm starting to build a decent collection of VHS tapes. Cause oh, I, that's like, cool. Yeah, you know, I have a VCR now and shit, so I'm like, no, nah, I'm not trying to, like, overdo it, but I'm just the novelty in the sense of, like, all right, get a couple cool things that, like, I liked as a kid, you know, and just right. like, reproduce that. So, like... I'm like into like I'm trying to find like old VHS wrestling tapes from back in the day like WWE ah. tapes and stuff and like on Amazon you can find a couple like I found a copy of Bash at the Beach like '96 for like I don't know like 14 bucks which that's reasonable dude anything like between 20 bucks I think is pretty yeah. reasonable for the most part uh, but like there was this copy of WrestleMania 10 I was looking at it on Amazon dude it was a hundred they wanted a hundred bucks and there was like one left Jesus Christ bucks. I was like whoa fuck is it really worth that much like what the fuck. And then so I found eBay because I had an email. I was like, so something about my PayPal account. I knew that eBay took PayPal. And I was like, I really wanted to like try to use my PayPal account more. Mm. So I was like, fucking, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll check eBay. And so I look up that same video I bought today for like 10 bucks. Wow. 
So they wanted a hundred bucks on Amazon. I can't ripped off on Amazon, dude. Like some things like you do. buy it now, ten bucks. Yeah, damn. Like it's being mailed to me as we speak. <laughs> nice. And then I bought I bought WrestleMania ten, King of the Ring nineteen ninety three, the very first one. Oh wow. And then I bought The Thing, an original copy of The Thing on VHS. Just oh, nice. That's like one of my favorite movies. Oh, so that's so cool. Like, oh. And then I, I think I'm just going to cap it at that. I think there's like maybe like one more. Oh, wait. And then I put a bid because you can bid on there and shit. Uh-huh. And so like today I fucking, I put a bid. Like this guy just like put a bunch of like, v, just just put them out because it was just like, there's only like a day and a half left of the fucking, um, oh, yeah. of the, the bidding process or whatever, of the auction. And like, I fucking, yeah, so he put out, like, a bunch of different fucking old, like, original copies, dude, because I'm not oh, trying nice. to get, like, reproduced ones, I'm getting, like, the original copies that you Hella. saw, the fucking movie, you know, like, going Hella. to star, star uh, you know, the fucking Sunburst and, like, Blockbuster and shit, so, yeah, WrestleMania 9, which is the very first WrestleMania, or pay-per-view, wrestling pay-per-view I have memory of watching, I'm, I'm gonna get an original copy of that, and I put, I put a, a bed in for 10 bucks, and nobody is fucking... I don't think anybody's going to fucking... I mean, it's a, who's going to be really looking down in the world right now? Like, Yeah. You know you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to get it, so... But it's like six bucks fucking shipping and handling, so 16, which, again, under that 20, it's not that bad. Oh, that's cool. I don't know. I, I, yeah, dude, I've been, I went to Goodwill, though, and I got a bunch of fucking... I got a bunch of... I got, I got Jaws, Stripes, um, I got fucking... Um, uh, fucking Major League... Um, nice fucking blazing saddles hella oh my gosh Fuck I never yeah seen, dude. i never seen blazing saddles until here a couple weeks ago when i was at oh fucking, really i was at goodwill and like because i had these vcr players i'm like fuck it dude why not buy a couple so i see it was the first one i bought just a couple weeks ago and i fucking watched it for the first time on vhs i was like oh, this is an amazing movie i was laughing so hard at the end dude oh yeah gene wilder like oh man I don't know the dude's name that played the you know the sheriff or whatever the, the Decker, De- Decker. Uh, yeah. yeah I love that fucking movie dude I think that's his name I need to get Young Frankenstein because I've never seen that that's, either uh, that I want to watch all the Mel Brooks films dude because that movie made me laugh so fucking oh wrong, yeah dude. dude no um watching that um I remember watching that as a little kid fuck see like, yeah I watched it at thirty but like I, I but watching it like that part where like they're all like. Eating the like they're all eating the cans of beans, yeah, and like and farting, farting hella. Yeah, that was a kid. He's like, "Hey, sheriff, shit. you got any more beans?" He's like, "I reckon you boys had enough." <laughs> they're all ripping ass. It's just like the ending of that. Oh film, my god! Dude. Like the ending of that film is just so just obscure, dude. It's just like it's like they kind of like had no idea how it ended. It was like, well. I don't know. I just love the scene where they break into the fucking the musical and shit. And like, oh yeah, all those musical fucking you know. <laughs> It was so funny, dude. It's well, like, it's oh, just great, especially. I mean, the movie ends, they end up in the theater. Like, if you've seen like, a lot of like western type films, yeah. it makes it even better because it's just like. Mm, I mean, that's how the, they are. That's, I mean, it, that's like, yeah. what is totally parroting, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I mean, Spaceballs. Oh, fuck, I love Spaceballs, that, dude. That movie is fantastic. Oh, that is one of the only Rick Moranis movies. <laughs> That's dude. worth a shit. I love Rick Moranis, dude. I mean, he's, he's funny. I don't know. I don't know. I liked SCTV, dude, back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, shit, I was watching when I was fucking working out earlier, dude. I put on Stripes. I haven't seen that movie in fucking years, dude. Yeah. The only time I've ever seen that is on VHS back when I was a kid, dude, because my dad had it, and then Trent had a copy, so I remember mm. watching it when we were teenagers and shit. And, like, just watching it today, dude, I was, like, fucking getting it on such a... Great pers- I was just like, all these jokes are funny. Like, yeah, like yeah. Harold Ramis is fucking funny. John yeah. Candy is so funny, funny in this yeah. shit, dude. Bill Murray's great. Like, I love it. Well, dude. like I was like a couple a uh, couple of years ago, the um watching the movie Airplane. Yeah, like Airplane's I have really I hadn't yeah. watched it in a really long time, and then I watched it, and like that movie is fucking hilarious, like. It is so inappropriate. Like, oh it. my god! Like the part at the beginning when they're like arguing, arguing over the the white and yellows and red zones. I haven't seen that movie in fucking forever. Oh my god, dude! Watch it sometime. It's like yeah. you don't like you don't realize how much shit they get away with in a movie that is rated PG. It's only PG shit. Well, I guess like they didn't introduce PG thirteen till like when did they introduce that? Actually, it might even. I, I think it might even be G. I don't even know. That's probably it's PG. probably PG. It's probably PG. But like, uh, I mean, there's 
fucking nudity in it. This one, There's this a is, naked chick. This is in why it. people weren't fucking. Pussies, Eric. Yeah, I know. This is why people weren't fucking. Pussies. But I mean, dude, there's literally a naked woman in it, and it's a PG movie. Eric Smith said, "That's where we got to end it on this episode, motherfucker." <laughs> naked bitches. <laughs> dude, PG seriously film. though, that's a great movie. <laughs> great movie. I love it, dude. Fucking ridiculous, dude. I gotta, I, I gotta say, man, I gotta go through and like pick up all the Mel, Bl- Mel fucking blank fucking movies and shit. Pick the hell of a day to quit smith- sniffing glue. Shit, motherfuckers. So what do you what do you got uh what do you got coming up, Eric? Where can people uh, see you in the near future? Bad Habit is playing in Yakima again for the first time in a while. Mm, uh, see record store day. What day is that? April thirteenth. Ooh, nice. And this this uh, episode drops on the fourth of April, or yeah, the fourth of April. Oh, nice. So, so um, go to that show. Yeah, motherfuckers. People go to that, and that's off the record here in Yakima, Washington, right? Indeed. We have listeners all across the world, so I have to... Oh, right, right. You're world famous now. I forgot. I get get downloads in Japan, fucking Taiwan. Dude, what what people in Japan think of this shit? Like, you (laughs) crazy American. Crazy American, Kevin Porter. Call call everybody pussy. Pussy. A pussy. A pussy. A pussy. All right, man. So, yeah, dude, people can find us. Yeah, on the internet as well. We're, we're always putting shit out, Eric. So, hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the podcast that no one listened to. For sure, man. It was a blast. Indeed, motherfuckers. Peace. <laughs>